Hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen. This is one of my favorite snacks to eat on the go and it's one of the most expensive to buy ready-made. So I'm gonna show you today how to make your very own beef jerky. So this is the beautiful piece of meat that I'm using today. This is a piece of top side that I got from my local butcher. It is very, very lean, which is what you're after when you're making jerky. You don't want it to be marbled with fat because unfortunately fat deteriorates and goes rancid quicker than the muscle meat. So do bear that in mind and always look for a nice, clear, unmarbled piece. We also need to take this big piece of fat off on the end because that isn't gonna go in the dehydrator. So let's just get that off. Oh, I should very quickly say that this piece of meat has been in the freezer for the last hour. So I bought it refrigerated, it's been in the fridge ever since, and then an hour ago I popped it in the freezer, and that's just to firm the meat up because it makes it much easier to cut once you've had a little bit of time to chill in the freezer. So when you look at your piece of meat, you want to identify which way the grain is going. Now I don't know if you can see, but my lines are all kind of headed in this direction. I hope you can see that on the camera. What that means is I want to be cutting that way. I want to be cutting across the grain. It's gonna make for a much more palatable and less chewy piece of meat by doing that. So try and work out where your lines are and try to cut against them. So because mine are going that direction, I'm gonna start down here and I'm gonna cut I think diagonally. Also, you need a decent knife. This is a global knife. This is not sponsored by them, but I do recommend these knives. They keep a cracking edge. Even Johnny, who's a bit of a knife snob, he was sharpening it for me today for this video. And even he commented how well it holds a blade. I'll leave a link to this knife in the description box below if you need to treat yourself to some new cutlery. It is a beautiful knife for things like jerky. Now, because I have frozen it, you can see that it's just so, so easy to cut. It's like cutting through butter. I personally like my slices really, really thin. I know people do do them much thicker than this. This is just my preference, really. I don't like big lumps of jerky. I like thin, delicate little strips of it. And then just very slowly, very calmly, you're just gonna slice all your beef up until you have a pile of little shreds. Now, let me tell you about the jerky we're making today. So. Unusually, my recipe doesn't use a marinade. This is literally beef, salt, and pepper. That's all I'm using. So because we're not using any nitrites or any chemicals to extend the life of the finished jerky product, this isn't something I can recommend you to do and then just to keep in a cupboard, in a glass jar, and just eat over the next three months. Um, I would feel very bad if you guys got sick <laughs> from doing that. So let me just explain how I store it and how I eat it. So once this is dried, it's gonna become quite leathery almost, completely dried out, but there will be a little bit of bend, a little bit of give in it. I then stack it up in the fridge in a plastic tub. I keep it in the fridge and I just dive into it. So if we're going out on a road trip or if I'm going out hiking and I just want a nice little snack to take with me, I just grab a handful and pop in a little Ziploc bag or in a little Tupperware tub, something like that. Please don't go making this, putting it on your kitchen shelf and eating it in six months time because I think you might be disappointed. You see that meat is beautiful and lean. There's no real fat pockets running through it. There's no tendons or nasty chewy bits. That is gonna make a delicious piece of jerky. You generally want your slices of meat to have pretty much the same thickness. I know it's really difficult when you're using a knife and hand carving, but the more even the layers are, then obviously the more even the drying time is gonna be. And you're not gonna be left with a bit that's under dry or a bit that's over dry and crispy. So take your time, there's no hurry. And actually, once you get into it, it's quite nice building up this little mountain of meat to dehydrate. Now, I'm using um, a dedicated dehydrator. You don't worry if you don't have one. You can do this in your oven. You'll see this is my dehydrator in the background here. This is my second model. The first one I had was about 30 or 40 pounds. I'm not sure they still make that original one I had. Uh, if they do, then I'll pop a link to it below. Or one that's very similar in size and price. 
My original one was round, which isn't actually very efficient when you're drying large quantities of things. And obviously living on a farm with a big allotment and wild food all around me, then obviously when I dry, I just want a big drying space. This one is fantastic. There's six shelves there. This is by a company called Fruvy, and for full disclosure, I am an ambassador for Fruvy, and any link that I post to their website will be an affiliate link. But regular viewers will know, I'm sure by now, that I don't promote kit that isn't any good. I am incredibly happy with this machine. My cheap round unit that lasted me brilliant. I think we've still got it in the spare room, actually. It's still it still works fine, but it doesn't have a temperature gauge on it, like you can't change the temperature. Whereas this thing, you, there are different settings for whether you're doing vegetables or meat or fruit leather or whatever. This is a superb piece of kit. Now you see this bit, I'm just cutting through a little river of fat there. So I'm actually gonna trim that bit off and I'm also gonna cut that lump of fat out too. Now, because we're not actually drying this for preservation, as I've already said, in theory, I guess you could leave the fat in, but I don't actually want to eat raw fat. I want the meat and the protein. Please let me know in the comments if you would like me to do a follow-up video using, um, perhaps using a jerky that's got a marinade on it, or if you want me to research and make um, a jerky that's gonna last longer term than this one. I've never done that. I've never used nitrites in anything, as far as I'm aware. So I would be quite interested to give it a go. Please let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in and I'll start looking into it. There's my pile of shredded meat. Let's get the dehydrator out. Now I find that this amount of meat normally makes about four racks. So I'm just gonna grab four out. We can always come back and grab more of you then. And in the top here, I've got um, a mesh, which is for smaller pieces of meat which I will show you in just a second. Now all you need to do, you need to make sure that these are clean. I do pop these through the dishwasher just to sterilize them. Then you need to kind of open out your pieces of meat into like one flat level and then pop them onto the drying racks. And when I have small little scrappy bits, that's when I use this fine mesh because as meat dries, it shrinks and the real small bits are just gonna fall through these holes in the drying racks. Try not to let the meat touch, try and get some nice little gaps between it. That's gonna help with drying and it's gonna help with drying evenly as well. Okay, that rack's full. Let's swap it for this one. So here we are with our finished laid out scraps of meat. And so that's probably what, three and a half trays in total. And yeah, I'm excited to taste this. It's gonna be good. Okay, next up we're gonna make the salt and pepper rub or sprinkle to pop on those. So let me pop your camera back up here. Oh yeah, do you see all the mess that I've kind of pushed out the way of the camera? Hashtag keeping it real. So this little recipe could not be simpler. All we need is one tablespoon of pepper and one of salt. So just give that a little mix round. And then my other ninja tool that I use for this is a sieve. This is a really old fashioned metal sieve, but it's got quite large holes in it. So what I'm gonna do now is sprinkle this lovely mix as evenly as possible over the meat. So I hold the sieve above the meat and then I slowly sprinkle to start with and then give it a nice little shake. So you kind of want every bit to get an even kind of bite of the, of the dressing. And a lot of the uh, recipes that I've seen, people turn the meat over. I'm only actually gonna cover one side with the mix. But again, do whatever you like. Now obviously you don't want so much salt on there, this becomes inedible, but you do want it to help enhance the flavor. So don't be too stingy, but don't be too extravagant either. And there you are, you can see there's a really fine little sprinkle of salt and pepper over them. This is just for flavor, we're not preserving, as I've already said, this is just to make this taste nice. Okay, now let's load up the beast. If you've found that you've cut pretty unevenly and you've got some thicker slices and thinner slices, then I find that the rack at the bottom dries quicker, so you might wanna make sure that you put all your thicker cuts onto one tray and stick them down to the bottom of the machine, and then the thinner slices can go above because they won't take so long. And there we go, now just switch it on. So on this machine, we just switch it on, 
press and hold the select button until the first number flashes, then up, and I'm going to put four hours on, select, select until all the numbers are kind of stationary, and then press start, and it comes on. This is your different temperatures here. For me, you want it on full whack, which is around 68, but up here you've got different levels for herbs, for raising bread, for making yogurt, for drying vegetables, for doing fruit and fruit leather, or then you've got your meat, fish, and jerky. So there we are, it might not take four hours in total. I will be back to check it around the two hour mark and then every half hour after that. So I'll just bring you guys back in when it's done and let you know how long it took. Oh, and here's how dirty my work surface is afterwards. So you see, you don't actually eat all that salt. Don't panic. So here they are, oh, they're fully dry. This was just over two hours. And as you can see, they are dry, but they're like still bendy, still quite leathery. Not crispy, um, but certainly dried. And at this stage, they are absolutely delicious. And because we cut against the grain, when you chew it, it breaks up really, really quickly into little pieces, so it's much easier to chew. If you cut it with the grain, so you've got a long piece of muscle, as opposed to lots of little bits of muscle, then it's much chewier. It's almost like meaty chewing gum. Personally, not for me. I like it like this. But that's it, how easy. Now the full recipe that I've used is down below in the comments, feel free to go and nab that. And if you don't have a dehydrator and you don't want to invest in one currently, you just want to give this a go, then I'll also pop the kind of oven instructions as well, how to make them in a normal kitchen oven. And if you're a jerky lover like me, then I do hope you give this a go. It works out so much cheaper than buying those little bags from the supermarket. And you also know what's gone into it, which is definitely a good thing. So as I mentioned before, do let me know in the comments below if you would like another recipe for jerky, perhaps one with a marinade, or perhaps you want me to give it a go at creating a jerky that lasts a long time. That would be interesting. And if you give this recipe a go, then please, please, please either share a photo on social media and tag me. You can find me pretty much everywhere as at Hedgecoma, or drop a comment below and say how you get on. So that's it for today, lovely people. Thank you for hanging out with me. I appreciate your time as always. Feel free to whack the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I'm gonna catch up with you next Wednesday, but in the meantime, have a cracking weekend. See you soon.